What is up guys, today we are playing a 1v1 matchup on a brand new map, Higurashi Forest in Battle for Middle Earth 1 on the patch 2.22. As usually we pick random and this time we will get to play with the Rohan faction, Master the Rohirrim. Okay, Higurashi Forest. Let's do this. So, you know, we need to first of all pick up the draft from the spare book because those peasants, if you don't give them draft, they are actually even weaker um, than orcs. And draft is very important. It only costs you one power point. It's recharging quite fast in the patch 2.22. So it's definitely a must pick for the Rohan army at the beginning. We are against a good faction. Hopefully it's not Rohan. Uh, I don't like mirror matches a lot. Hopefully it's Gondor. And I'm happy. I cannot complain because... In the last days and even weeks, I believe I got to play only with Isengard, so it's like a great refreshment to see a different faction, but the White Hand. Okay, so when it's against Gondor, we need to be kind of fast. You don't want to get into the mid to late game too much against Gondor as Rohan, because then he will start camping with Trebuchet, Ganath is... I just... <laughs> I just demolish my... Dude, I... <laughs> I mean, I make those mistakes now in the last days quite often, and that's gonna cost me so much time, guys. Now I need to walk all the way back and capture this. I would have gotten some money from it, and that's not the best start into the game, but hopefully we will be able to creep this goblin layer with the hobbit. And also, you know, quick question to you guys. What do you guys think about this map? Please let me know in the comment section down below. We are working hard to actually implement more and more maps into the battle for middle of one, and... In the next upcoming update, we will have also like a um, 2v2 map, a free for all map, a 1v1 map. So in total, we, will, we are aiming to get like, you know, like 10 extra new maps, which are obviously great, beautiful, and also well balanced. And if you are looking for a balanced map in Battle for Middle Earth games, you need to make sure that it's symmetrical. That means no player has any advantages on playing on any side of the map. Okay. I mean, we will, <laughs> uh, that's not a good start, but we will at least be able to now deal some damage. Let's build up a steeple. This Hobbit is also putting pressure on us, uh, which is not very good, but we should be easily able to destroy this. I mean, the good thing is we got, you know, like extra money from the creeping, which is very good. That's going to help us to get the steeple up on the field uh, sooner. And remember, Rohan is a better faction in compared to Gondor at the beginning of the game because you have the chance, obviously, to recruit multiple additional peasants from the inside farms and outside farms, but also your stable and your Rohirrim are cheaper in compared to the Gondor stable and the Gondor knights. Okay, he cannot fight this. Um, we can also hide the hobbits here on the spot, actually. Um, that's actually a very important move. This way we can deny him this farm eventually permanently. Because, you know, in order to take down the Hobbit, he needs to recruit Faramir or Gandalf. That's the only way he can take down the Hobbit, who is invisible. And uh, normally you don't go for, you know, Faramir against Rohan. But yeah. Okay, so what we are aiming for is we need to fill up the base with farms and get some extra Rohirrim up on the field and then we need to start collecting money for the 5,000 mark. Now, if you are asking yourself, but why 5,000? Then you are, you know, not familiar with the Rohan army because with 5,000, you can actually, instead of building a farm outside, build an end mood. And the last march of the end will begin. He left the banner alive, by the way. <laughs> he didn't kill the banner. Uh, the banner might actually slowly but surely take down his farm. Creeping is very important, um, you know, even more important than map control, because map control is gonna be always uh, something you can fight for, but creeps, they are only there until you take them or your opponent takes them, and you taking them means your opponent cannot take them anymore, which means more money for you and also more power points. Now we have heal from the spell book, and remember, each leveled Rohirrim is going to be very important to win those skirmishes against Gondor Knights until he will have forge blades or heavy armor and gondor has access to upgrades a bit sooner than rohan because unlike rohan gondor doesn't need to build a separate building for upgrades rohan has to build the armory for 1200 but gondor can do that from the blacksmiths when you see my hobbit is denying him this farm that's good he's fighting for my farm but that's okay for me because in this in the meantime i'm taking lots of creeps from the map Be on 
We are creeping like crazy, dude. That's crazy. Okay. The problem is our, you know, one of the Rohirrim is badly damaged and they are only level 1. Let's try to fight for this one. Um, should be hard, but we have now the third Rohirrim. I mean, what you want to do is you want to, you know, use one or two of them for creeping and then the third one you want to use always for the map control. And the question about how many Rohirrim you should have on the field is easy. You need to have at bare minimum the same amount of Rohirrim on the field like your opening has gone tonight. And ideally, you want to have even one more than that, you know? Because then you can keep running. Because the second he has blades, you cannot fight against him anymore. And we are not going for upgrades in this game. We are actually going for the end smooth. I think at some point of the game, we might need to recruit Theoret. <laughs> in order to be able to fight against him. Because otherwise, he will always win those skirmishes. And when he's smart... Um, you you know, like experience is something you will gain over time by playing Battle for Middle Earth multiplayer over years. And when you realize, okay, Rohan is not going for upgrades, then you need to kind of understand, okay, he is going for the end mood. And what you need to try to do, hold on a second, I'm losing almost my Rohirrim level 4. What you need to try to do is you want to make sure that he is not able to stay on any of your settlements in front of your castle. And you can do that with, by picking up the Alvin from the Spellbook, for example, which will also deny the leadership for my Rohirrim from my King Theory. Okay, we have almost two power points collected. That's pretty good. Um, we might also need to pick up the Alvin Wood ourselves to be able to cover the enemy Alvin Wood. And we are getting there, closely, slowly but surely. And trust me, the ends are extremely annoying and almost impossible to deal with for Gondor early game. But that also means we need to be fast. We don't want to lose time. We don't want to waste time. Let us draw swords together. Crush this evil. We can turn and fight, no problemo. We have the King of Rohan here, which means 30% more damage and 50% more experience. Uh, not experience, armor. Basically, Theorin means, uh, like, Theorin is better than Forge Blades and better than Heavy Armor, but not better than both of them combined. So long story short, if the opening has only heavy armor or forge blades and our Rohirrim have Theorin around without any, you know, upgrades, our Rohirrim are gonna be able to win. You can also make sure to get the last with Theorin if you can. And it would be amazing to get him to level 4 later on to unlock the glorious charge. For death and glory. Kill the Hobbit, that's good. Um, we have two power points now and our Hobbit is doing a phenomenal job. It's much better. Dude, I'm telling you guys, Meriodak Brandybok is so much better than Peregrine Took. <laughs> because Peregrine Took is, you know, making foolish stuff. Okay, nice, that's good. Kildan is almost level 3. Level 4 is a huge power spike for the King of Rohan. And, you know, I genuinely don't enjoy these matchups a lot between Gondor and Rohan because most of the time it's actually running around the map for the map control and for the settlements pretty much like 24-7. That's why I'm not going for a late game. A late game, it's winnable for Rohan, but it's definitely tough. It's definitely tough because the second he gets Gandalf on the field, Gandalf is like a magical solution to all your problems when you play with the Rohan, uh, Gondor faction. And Rohan will have a hard time. I mean, unless he makes a mistake and overestimates his tankiness and underestimates our damage output, it's going to be quite tough for us to take down a Gandalf. Okay, we need to... We need a little bit more, a little bit more, like 500 more resources, and then we are golden. Take down the farm. Oh no, 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 no. I cannot fight this though, because he has heavy armor plus forge blades. But he's chasing me, that's good. Look at the minimap in the meantime, the map is looking good for me. Uh, our hobbit is still able to deny him the farm, pretty much since the beginning of the game, he couldn't get the third farm. And he also didn't want to go for uh, Faramir to actually unlock this spot. Okay, no more creeps left on, on this map. Higurashi Forest. But, oh, oh, oh. He managed the farm to get a bit of money back. And we are going for it, boys. We are going for it, boys. Let's go. The last march of the ends begins. Come, my friends. The ends are going to war. It is likely that we go to our doom, the last march of the ends. 
Dude, I love the ends, and that's so good early game, because as we are talking, he has only Gondonites upon the field, and Gondonites are not the best, you know, weapon against ends, because ends are pretty much tanky against anything but magic and fire. So without fire arrows or without magical damage from Gandalf or even the warning arrow from Faramir, it's going to be tough for Rohan, uh, for Gondor, I mean, to deal with the ends. Uh, fortunately for him, though, our ends are not going to be permanently on the field. Okay, we are, we are almost there, boys. In the meantime, map control, map control, map control. The end smooth. And by the way, I was playing for the first years um, Battle for Middle Earth in German language. And in German language, for whatever reason, end mood is called end think. The last march of the ends begins. We have also three power points which we can definitely invest into the Alvin allies. We can demolish this, no problem. I mean, we need to demolish this to actually get money back. You get 1500 for demolishing it, but you need to invest 5000 to begin with to build it up. So at the end of the day, if you demolish it, you actually invest like 3500. But you still have to save up for 5000 if this makes sense for you. So it's not easy to get it done. But it's very important and also very impactful. Because now what we're gonna do is we need to try to break at least two parts of the wall. One part is not enough. Because that's gonna hurt him a lot. And he need, you know, he needed to now invest 3,000 into repairing these two broken parts of the wall. Okay, what I can do now is actually I can... Look, we have almost full map control because he has to deal with this. He cannot ignore my ants. That's not possible. Unfortunately for us, the Ains, they don't have too much time remaining on him, um, anymore, but we can also put... Um, oh, 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 let's throw the swords, because in the sword modes, the Elven warriors are immune to trample, they cannot be trampled down, and they have like a revenge damage. Basically, what that means is if the enemy cavalry goes over them when they are using the swords, they will take some sort of damage. He used the Elven loot, but it's okay, we can ignore that and go for the, for the structures. Let's go for all the upgrades. First of all, armor to get more tankiness. Come on, Theorin. Nice. Glorious charge is unlocked. But we're not going to use it now. There is no need to use it. We might need to buy our outpost. Because I genuinely don't enjoy or don't like the idea to go all the way back to their own castle. And outposts are a great tool to actually build like a statue, a well. You know, all this good stuff. Okay, I mean, we are in a very good spot, boys. We are in a very, very good spot. I mean, he will still not be able to capture this farm. That's unbelievable. Meriot of Brandybog is definitely the MVP of this game. Okay, okay, I think we can now go for a, for a big push. And uh, let's see if he can defend this or not. Guys, I know you don't. You are getting bored of watching me playing Isengard over and over again. But, you know... <laughs> when I play, you know, multiplayer, I always pick random. And what can I do if I actually end up getting Isengard over and over again? I cannot do anything about that. Oh, he's camping. For death and glory. We gotta focus down the buildings first. We don't want to fight against the Gondonites with the statue being around. If we can, take down the statues. That's gonna give us also lots of experience points and also power points. That's that's good. And if he can kill and take down the Citadel, that's gonna be even better. I think he has like one or two farms outside on the field. Uh, that's not enough to recover from the damage we have dealt to him. The Citadel has been taken down, that's a thousand. He's investing also lots of money into the defensive structures like the Battle Towers. Which is good for him to help him out from the certain situation, but also that hurts his economy quite a lot. And that also means he won't be able anytime soon to repair those broken parts of the world. But also he won't be able to recruit his su super weapon. The solution to this problem with Gand of the White. We have three power points collected. Uh, with six power points, we can even summon more ends from the spellbook of Rohan this time. But the goal here is to show you the dominance of Rohan against Gondor at the, you know, in the early and mid game. I mean, we had a good start with the creeping action at the beginning with Merry and Peasant. Then we got to deal a lot of economical damage to him. We took down two of his farms and then hiding the Hobbit at one of the settlements, denying him the farm. Oh, sorry, I was hitting my microphone. Uh, denying him the farm pretty much 24-7 was actually key. Okay. 
Now we can also go for a Rohirrim Archer, but first of all we need to make sure to get the Archer range level 2 for a Fire Arrow upgrade purchase. Let's go, but uh, you know, the, the thing is, um, our ability is so long cooldown, without Glorious Charge I don't want to go in yet. I want to be a bit more patient. <laughs> look look at the minimap, dude. That's how you dominate Gondor as Rohan. Rohan's early mid game is so strong. I would even say that Rohan is the best early game in the entire game, even though you don't have the chance to pick up the Warchan like Isengard can. Or you don't have the chance to pick up the eye, Tinted Land, or even Elven Wood like Gondor and Mordor can. But you have Draft, and you have the chance to recruit 5 Swordmen at the same time. It's like having 5 Uruk Pits, and you recruit those Uruks from 5 different spots for the, on the entire map. Oh my goodness, you gotta love to see it. The glow animation from the Glorious Charge, giving me... I mean, the, the, the thing is, even after this many years, watching the Lord of the Rings and seeing this, in, you know, insane scene of Theodin in Minas Tirith writing it down, still giving me goosebumps. Theodin. I mean, I was sad for Theodred because because we couldn't get the chance to see him. Imagine you are acting in Lord of the Rings. They're like, hey, you are hired. But what am I gonna do? Which character am I? You are Theodred, the king of Rohan, and you are you are hired because you didn't read the books yet. You're like, okay, I'm the prince of Rohan. I, I am a very important character. And then you're gonna be seen only for like two minutes, and then you die in the scene. You have, you know, you pretty much are dead. Killed by the white hand. Theodred. I felt bad for him. We can fight this, I mean, we have obviously Theodin leadership, he doesn't have, and we have also, uh, say it, the horseman shields are also giving you additional, you know, armor against swordmen, very important to be purchased, also in Gondor against Rohan matchups. Just focus on the buildings, we don't need to fight against them, uh, you know, we can fight and win this, but remember that there are too many towers shooting at us down all the time. And we are not joking around anymore. The revenge for the Westfold has been taken. Oh, he's summoning those rangers and hoping for the best, but hey, 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 that's not gonna help you out, my friend. Trust me on that one. This is not gonna be helpful. Let's heal up. Um, you know, <laughs> dude, I was playing good this game, I think. I didn't make too many mistakes. I think we didn't lose any row here in Battalion. That's very good and also very important. That's the one thing you need to... Master first. When you play good factions, you don't want to lose your cavalry because they are expensive and it's painful if you lose them. And now we're gonna have even more ends coming up very soon. Oh, it looks like he doesn't even have the money to actually repair the citadel. <laughs> Do it. How this is how Rohan can shut down Gondor completely and take Gondor out of the game. They cannot even play the game anymore. The ends have started to fight, and the ends are the ones who ended it. GG well played. I hope you enjoyed this one. If you did, please don't forget to leave a like and also subscribe for videos for videos for more videos like this in the future. I will see you next time. Until then, keep hitting like a truck, and as always, stay beyond standards. Peace out.